Hey, welcome back Petapixel viewers. It is Chris Nichols here. Today what we wanna do is debunk some of the common myths that people have about shooting 360 video. And to do that, we're using the Insta360 X3. Now Jordan and I have used 360 cameras before. Years ago we used one, the brand will remain nameless, and although we had a wonderful day fishing on the river, we didn't have such a great experience with the camera. We didn't enjoy working with it, Jordan did not like editing it afterwards, and although we saw the potential of 360 video, it was just rather a poor experience overall. So that camera ended up at the bottom of the river that day, and whether that was an accident or deliberate, years later I still don't know. Okay, myth number one, that 360 video is just for VR headsets and real estate videos. I mean, when we first played with the 360 camera, we saw that potential and it's absolutely still there. I mean, there's some very exciting ideas where you simply pull the camera through a space and the viewer is free to look wherever they want. That can be very interesting, but it was tricky to figure out how you could tell a story. I mean, yes, you could take a user into an environment they can explore, but how do we narrate that? How do we direct the viewer's eye? Well, with the new Insta360 app, it's actually really easy. So I can go through, I can use the AI to give me suggestions on what frames are interesting anyways. Once I pick a composition I like, I can go from that to another point later in the video, choose that as my next composition, and then the app will do that transition seamlessly and smoothly. So it really makes it a simple process to tell that story and direct the audience where you want them to look. But isn't 360 video a real pain in the butt to edit? Well, that's our second myth. Let's go to Jordan to find out. Hey, it's Jordan in my editing office to talk about one of the biggest misconceptions, which is that 360 video is very difficult to edit. And honestly, with a lot of the options out there, that is absolutely the case. But what I really like is, first of all, Insta360's own software here is actually First of all, very stable and plays back really well. Even on this older M1 iMac, I'm not having any dropped frames when I'm previewing the footage. And the interface is actually super intuitive if you haven't worked with 360 video before. You can just very quickly lay a keyframe which tells it, at this moment, I want the camera to be looking in this direction and cycle through a whole bunch of those. And this can give you a very seamless, very cinematic kind of look to the footage. The other thing I found really useful is you don't have to work with everything right in this software. You can just select the video as spherical video, export it, and drop it into your NLE. So I'm using Final Cut. You can also do this with Adobe Premiere. And then right within my NLE, I can determine again where the camera is going to be pointed at a specific moment. Now, one other really cool trick that I've found working with this footage is I can just point the camera in two different directions, export that video twice, and then when I'm editing it, treat it as a multi-cam clip. And I can click back and forth between the two angles whenever I think it's appropriate. This could be a ton of fun for doing, say, an interview, or if you wanna walk someone through an environment, just clicking between the environment and the presenter yourself. It's a really intuitive option. Now remember, I'm not working with 360 footage all the time, so it's really impressive that after less than an hour, I was very comfortable working with Insta360 software and using the footage that it created in my NLE to blend perfectly with my non-360 footage. It was actually very intuitive, and I think you'll enjoy the workflow. Okay, myth number three, that you cannot easily mix 360 video in with traditional video formats. But the X3 is actually a very versatile camera. You've got a lot of fun tools. And one of the big parts of that is we now have improved 5.7K resolution with the 360 cameras. This gives us a lot of room to play with, not only for stabilizing the footage, but for choosing whichever traditional frames we want. And I don't even have to use both lenses and shoot 360 video. If I want, I can just choose the inner or outer lens. They're exactly the same for image quality. I can get four 4K with a standard 60 by 9 frame. Because this is rugged and weather sealed, I can use it like an action camera. But if I want to do selfie stuff, because I'm getting the same image quality out of the inner camera, I can see myself on the screen and unlike my smartphone, I'm not taking image quality hit. So this also makes this ideal for vlogging. 
So the X3 has a lot of potential as a vlogging camera. As I mentioned before, the footage is very well stabilized. If you want to get better audio than just the built-in mics, you can get an adapter that goes right in the side of the camera here, and the lenses will wrap around that adapter so you don't see that microphone in your footage. So unlike pretty much every action camera on the market, you have a quarter 20 thread built right into the bottom of the camera without having to use a housing or an adapter. So of course, that's really nice to attach to anything you want. If you're using a selfie stick in the bottom, the processing for 360 video can make that selfie stick disappear. And the X3 won't just clone out the smaller selfie stick, it'll even work with their three meter long selfie stick. This thing's awesome. You can do these sort of mock drone shots as you see Jordan passing over me and it can be visually very interesting. I also played a lot with the bullet time feature. This is neat, I just use the regular selfie stick with the bullet time handle, screw them together. And again, the X3 will clone out the selfie stick part. So basically you just get this cool rotational effect and you don't have a distracting stick like you might find on some other 360 cam. And if you are vlogging with 360 video, of course, it's really seamless to go from your face to anything you want the audience to look at and back to that, again, just using the Insta360 app. And if you are vlogging, you want to change locations, you can do really cool transitions with 360 video where you just pan the camera up to the sky and then pan down, you're in a different location. And as well, you've got some really fun tools with the X3. So first off, 8K time lapses, we found those really easy to incorporate into our standard timelines. Bullet time was a lot of fun as you can see here. And another really nice feature was the tiny planet. Again, going from just a standard frame into a tiny planet or a fisheye effect can be a lot of fun. So I'm out on location here. I've got my phone with me. I've got the Insta360 X3 here. Let's bust myth number four, that you have to go home, use your powerful editing computer to edit everything and share from there. So we've heard from Jordan about how you can take your footage and you can edit it right into your favorite editing software, mix it with other clips and stuff like that. But what if you're on location, you just wanna share things nice and quickly? Well, the Insta360 app is actually quite powerful. So I can trim my clips, I can set up templates to do 16 by nine horizontal or vertical for social media. And I can also do a lot of the powerful stuff like pick my key frame. So choose where I want the viewer's eye to go, then transition to another composition in that 360 video. It's actually very powerful but also very easy. But there's an even more intuitive way to choose your perspectives and what your viewer is gonna see, and that's by using Snap Wizard. So while you're playing back your video, you can then use your phone, you can zoom in, reframe while the video is playing. You can even move the phone around and that will be your new perspective. And then once the video is done playing, it will save all those viewing angles for future playback or even uploading. But I can even go a step further. I can use the Insta360 app with its auto mode. It uses AI technology to build a video for you. So you give it a clip and then it'll choose the key frames, it'll do interesting transitions, it will add music. I mean, it really builds all of this and saves it for you as a video that you can just share right to social media. It couldn't be simpler. And if you're looking to be inspired, Insta360 Shot Lab has you covered. Now you can see that there are tons of different effects you can play with. The best part is Insta360's built-in tutorials show you exactly how to do everything. It's very easy and it cuts out a lot of work for post-production. You can see here that we played with Sky Swap. We had tons of fun putting an Aurora above me or the Milky Way Galaxy. It's a really cool effect and there's so many things that you can play with. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed our look at debunking some of the common myths about 360 video. And if I'm being completely honest, Jordan and I wanted to make this video because we believed those myths ourselves. It actually kept us away from using 360 cameras for many years. But now that we've played with the Insta360 X3, you can absolutely see using this as a supplementary camera to get cool shots and work it in with all of our regular footage. Please leave your comments below. Let us know what you think about the myths that we talked about today. And as always, we appreciate you joining us here on our episodes. Watch for more Petapixel coming soon.